welcome brothers and sisters i want to wish you and your family a very happy easter with the joy of the risen lord uh, be with you and your family i know this easter has been very different uh, for me and for uh, you know everybody in our community and across the world uh, not being able to receive sacraments not being able to go for mass for the easter vigil uh, not being able to visit our family members near and dear ones uh, during easter uh, you know it's uh, it, it's little it's been very very um, you know different uh, for each of us and uh, i would like to really um, you know spend some time uh, reflecting you know with you on what god has been doing uh, in and through this coronavirus pandemic uh, that has brought the world to a halt uh, when you look at um, uh, you know all the leaders of great you know countries superpowers everybody is clueless on what to do there is no vaccine uh, and there is a message that god wants to communicate to us through the sickness through this virus through this pandemic and uh, you know one thing that i have you know realized in talking to you know different people across the community outside the community looking at the media looking at the news uh, one thing that's uh, common uh, is is really the fear of facing the pandemic uh, and the fear of contracting the virus itself there are a lot of fears that you know currently has struck mankind has struck you know it has not left uh, you know politicians actors actresses uh, it has not shown mercy to anybody to the rich to the poor uh, you know uh, it has been merciless the way the virus has been you know spreading uh, and uh, the natural inclination is to be fearful uh, i know that you know uh, i had traveled mid of march along with other you know brothers in the servant council to bombay for the servant council meeting and uh, you know while going everything was uh, you know fine and on sunday you know i get a call from my wife telling that hey uh, you know it came out in the news that you know 35 people in bombay uh, you know were tested positive uh, for coronavirus and uh, you know she was telling me be careful uh, you know we uh extremely careful you're coming by flight so uh, you know be cautious and that struck me and uh, you know I, it was constantly on my mind i was you know very careful what do i touch what do i you know uh, in the in the flight in, in the bus um, but uh, you know the fear of you know contracting the virus or you know me uh, you know somehow uh, you know getting infected was was real was there uh, and uh, you know after i came home i refused to hug my wife or my children i just went into a room isolated myself because i was like i have no clue whether i have the infection or you know i was feeling my nose was you know running and yeah, i was like oh my uh, it, it was it was a uh, you know fearful experience um uh, but then i waited out and you know uh, everything seemed fine and you know i resumed my normal life uh, but it was you know it took me back it uh, took me by shock it took me by uh, you know think to reflect and uh, you know i am sure uh, you know some of us would have gone through the same you know experience uh, you know as well and uh, there have been many of our family members who are probably healthcare workers who will be in the uh field uh, in the front line saving lives putting their own life at risk and there will be fear on behalf of them you know when we 
think of their them their family uh, you know i'm sure uh, you know we'll be concerned and worried about their lives now with the global recession you know uh, coming in uh, with the economy really in a standstill or you know sliding down um, i'm sure there'll be fear of you know losing our jobs there are already uh, you know uh, thousands of jobs being you know lost and uh, there will be you know a natural tendency for us is either fear contracts uh, losing business losing jobs um, what is going to happen to our family uh, you know will we have resources uh, will we be able to manage how can we manage our future you know these are the thoughts that you know probably are consuming our mind uh, you know and fear probably has been gripping us especially with the media and the negative news the amount of deaths uh, that are happening all around the world so what is god really trying to you know speak to us through what is happening in our time what is happening now is what i want to really you know focus on today is god is really asking us to have faith in the time of quarantine so that's going to be our topic today uh you know uh, that i'm going to share um so let's look you know step back a little bit look at history uh, it's not like this is the first time that we're having a plague uh, and a you know virus that's killing people uh, in history there has been plenty uh, previously um how did the early church see the plagues they saw the uh, the plagues through the eyes of faith and the scripture verse that they held on to was 2 corinthians 5 7 the word of god says for we walk by faith and not by sight they knew that their hope was heaven they knew that their lives were meant for heaven for eternal life not for life here on earth so whatever they did even willing to go into the plagues and help out a historian called rodney stark this is what he wrote in his book okay he is not a, a christian he is you know a, a, a pagan but this is his uh, perspective of uh, you know uh, how christians responded during the time of plague uh, in uh, in history he said christianity grew because the early christians never stopped spreading the gospel and in taking care of the sick during the time of plagues so god is calling us to relook at how we are viewing this plague of coronavirus brothers and sisters so i want to bring four areas that god is calling us to reflect on the first he is calling us as individuals he is calling us as a community he is calling us as a country as nations to return back to him let's take hosea chapter 6 when you have time you can read the entire scripture 1 to 6 but we will focus on this scripture verse come let us return to the lord for he has torn us for he will heal us he has wounded us but he will bandage us that in spite of the sickness in spite of the deaths in spite of all the pain that people are going through our god is looking at us to heal us and he wants us to come back to him that is the reason why there is this plague even in the old testament when the israelites rebelled against god he sends fiery serpents so that they can turn back to god and god is longing he is bringing right now with the situation in the world he is bringing the world to their knees because they don't have a solution they don't have a vaccine they don't have anything 
all their money, all their pride, prestige, everything is, you know, useless. And God is calling us to look at this world that we've been going after, we've been idolizing, we've been getting sucked into being living in the world with them, following their ways, following the, uh, you know, their lifestyle, everything that the world is going after, we are following after. And God is calling you and me to recognize that the world has gone far away from him. And it's time for us as individuals and for the world to really come back to him. And recognize that he is God, that Jesus is Lord, and that there is no other way to heaven except through him. So brothers and sisters, the second aspect that God is calling us to look into is to look into our lives and see what are the areas that we need to repent. I would want you to reflect with me on this particular scripture verse in the Old Testament, 2 Chronicles 7 verses 14. It's a, you know, it's a packed scripture verse loaded with instructions that God is expecting his people to follow. And if we follow what he will do, what are his promises that he's going to bestow on us? So the four things that he is asking us to obey. He says, the first thing is, if we humble ourselves. And what is the opposite of humility? is pride. So he's bringing us to our knees and telling us, my son, my daughter, Humble yourself. Look to me. Don't rely on your own strength. Look to me. Abide in me. I am the wine and you are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. And he's calling us to pray. He is asking us to seek his face, not his hand, of what he can give, of what we can get from him, but just to worship him for who he is, to just look at him, to acknowledge him as Lord of our lives, to just look at the face of the Father and to really look into our lives and turn from our wicked ways. These are the four things. Humble ourselves, pray, seek his face, and turn from our wicked ways. And this is what God is promising. Three things he's promising. One is, he will hear from heaven. Every prayer that we make, he will hear our prayer. Every petition, every intercession, he's going to hear it. He's going to forgive each of our sins, no matter how sinful or how Far we have gone away from God. He is going to forgive us. And the third is he will heal our land. And this is what he wants of us. He wants to heal our land, our brokenness, the sickness that is plaguing all the countries. Provided we follow the first four. Humble ourselves, pray, seek his face and turn from our wicked ways. Brothers and sisters, let's reflect on the third aspect that God is calling us to do. He is telling us to renew our minds. Let's reflect on Romans 12 verses 2. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
so that you may prove what is the will of God and that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Right now, it's just negative news being bombarded, fear. And God is telling us, don't get conformed to the ways of this world, to the thinking of this world, to the pattern of this world. He is asking us to be transformed. Let the word of God penetrate our minds, ponder on it, meditate on it. The promises of God, the promises of life, of wholeness, of blessing, of protection, that he will be with us till the end. To take up the cross and follow him in spite of this lockdown. So brothers and sisters, God's chastisement is going to lead us to a mighty renewal. Provided we confess, we turn from our way, wicked ways and we ask for his mercy. So I want to take you through two beautiful saints. They also went through plagues in their times. And I want to really uh, you know, show you how they responded as Catholics during the time of plague. The first saint that I want us to reflect on. Okay, I, I'm, I'm calling them heroes of our faith because they are the ones who have gone ahead of us. And we need to look at them and imitate them. The first saint is Gregory the Great. This was in, you know, in Rome in, 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 in 1590 AD. And you know, there was a plague and thousands of lives were being, you know, uh, they died. There was no health care compared to, you know, how it was now. Nowadays, uh, health care is much advanced. So St. Gregory was a deacon at that time. He organized a procession. He called uh, monks, ab abbots, he called nuns, uh, got the Blessed Sacrament, uh, and he started a procession seeking Mother Mary's protection upon the people, pleading for mercy. And he walked with the Blessed Sacrament. Uh, you know, everybody walked in procession. And when they reached a particular church, they saw St. Michael the Archangel with a flaming sword. He appeared to them. And God saw how the people repented. And he showed mercy on them. And the plague stopped. And all the people rejoiced. And everybody there, pagans, knew that it was God. Now the second saint was Saint Charles Borromeo. Yeah, he was he was the he was he was also known as the plague of you know Saint Charles during the time of Saint Charles. Yeah, it was in the 15th century. He was the Archbishop of Milan, and when all the uh, you know. Uh, Kings and all the people who were there ruling, they all ran away. They abandoned the city because of the number of plagues, number of people who were dying. Anybody who had a symptom, they used to throw them out of the house on the road, left them to die, piling up one on top of the other on the roads, just left to die. This was the time St. Charles came. He reached out to the poor. He reached out to the sick. Those were inflicted. He built altars outside the churches and he exposed the Blessed Sacrament. He had 40 hours of adoration and he called the faithful to come and intercede, asking God for mercy upon the land, upon the people. He donated his clothes. He, you know, uh, all the tapestries in the church, he just gave it to the poor. He organized processions went and you know the priests during those times they even gave their lives ministering to the sick 
That was the way the early church responded. Christians who went through the same plague responded. So brothers and sisters, God is calling you and me during this time of coronavirus. Are we really afraid to die? Are we really afraid to die? So we need to really look at it, brothers and sisters. It's not about the physical death that God is asking us to look at. Each of us will have to die. What about our spiritual lives? Are we ready to meet him? Even if we get the sickness, are we ready to go to heaven and know that when we die, we will be with God? So brothers and sisters, God is calling us even in this time to save souls. He is not bothered about the lockdown. The work, his mission needs to continue. And when we, when we look at St. Teresa of Lisio, she is the patron of missions. She stayed within her convent. She never went out anywhere. But she still called the patron of missions because she sat there and everything she went through, she offered up for the salvation of souls. So we are called, brothers and sisters, to intensify our prayer. To cry out to God during this time to save souls. Every small sacrifice we are making, just being in the house, just stuck here. It is a penance and we need to offer it up. Don't let it go waste. We need to offer it up for the salvation of souls because that is the cry of God's heart. It's not about people losing lives, physical deaths. He is more concerned about the death that sin can cause, the spiritual death that can lead them to eternal damnation, yours and my soul, and the people who are there in the world. That's what he is more concerned about. That is what we need to look at. And that's why we need to proclaim, continue to proclaim the gospel in spite of us being at our homes. I will come to practical steps on how we can continue to proclaim the gospel. Brothers and sisters. So when we look at the bigger picture, whatever is happening right now, this sickness, this Coronavirus is not to end in death, but it is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. John 11 verses 4. So this sickness, this, this entire uh, pandemic, it is for us to realize that our lives here on earth is temporary. That whatever we do, we need to look at eternity and see if we are getting ready to go there and meet God. Now, what should we do in this time? Ephesians 5, 15 to 16 says, watch carefully then how you live. Not as foolish persons, but as wise, making the most of the opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not continue in ignorance, but try to understand what is the will of God. 
So God is calling us to be wise in this time. Don't waste time. Don't think that you will do it after the lockdown is over. No. Now is the time. We are called to invest more time in prayer, in reading the word. We started the Speak Life initiative where everybody in the community is called to just release the word of God so that the word can be powerfully proclaimed. That God can use the word of God for the salvation of souls. Spend more time with our family. Have family prayers. You know, we have this 12 o'clock and 8 o'clock time. Every day come together as a family. Attend daily mass. More time for study. Look at books. Look at what you can dwell deeper into, grow in our spiritual lives, in our walk with God. Invest time. This is the time. You will never get this time again. Apart from our spiritual lives, how can we use our time wisely? Is not to forget the poor, not to forget the brethren who are needy, who are starving, who are hungry. Daily wage workers, they don't have food. And it is time, brothers and sisters, that we make a difference, each one of us. The small might that we are offering to feed one soul, one family, it can go a long way. And God looks at the poor with compassion. He is very, the poor are very close to his heart. And God wants you and me to contribute, to help in whatever way we can. We cannot go out and, you know, find the needy and, you know, find the poor, find out where they are, where they're having food. And you no, know, I know it's, it's a lockdown. I know it's not practical, but can we give our finances? Can we buy provisions as we go to the shop to buy provisions for ourselves? Can we buy something extra? Give it to your parish priest. Work along with the parish priest. See how we can support the parish and people will come to the parish to ask for food. I'm sure the parish priest can give it to them. So in small ways we can help brothers and sisters. If we concretely see how we can impact the poor with the no one aid ministry, we can make a significant difference. And God will look kindly upon us. Brothers and sisters, I really urge you to work with your chapter servants, work with your district servants, see what you can do as a chapter. I'm sure in the coming you know, days, there will be people who will be losing jobs, who will not have money in our community. Can we support them? Can we help them? That's what the early church did. They shared everything. They had everything in common. Let us not be selfish, but look to the interest of our brothers. Look at the others. Look at the struggle that they will go through without a job or without food. And I urge you, brothers and sisters, to support our brothers and sisters who don't have jobs, who are going to lose their jobs now. If you have contacts, spread the word around. Help them to find a job. It's our brothers. We need to help. Another thing that we should continue to do is not wait for the lockdown to, you know, get over for us to have our meetings. We need to use technology. We have social media for evangelization to, you know, con continue our formation program, not to stop and wait for the lockdown to get, you know, lifted up. Then we will have all the programs. Then we'll have our CLS. No. What if the lockdown is going to continue for some more time? Can we wait? Souls are perishing, brothers and sisters. So we need to continue the same intensity to reach out to our brothers and sisters. For those who are 
technologically challenged who you know who can't install or who are not able to connect i ask the younger generation the younger people to help the older ones to install the app teach them how to get on a conference call how to get on a video conference if they can't teach them how to do just a basic teleconference so that their households can meet i really urge you to keep the fire burning we need to be connected with one another as a community we can't be isolated the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy and he will look for opportunities when we are isolated so that he can attack and we should not allow that we should come as a community and support one another in this time so brothers and sisters continue your mfc meetings continue teachings continue your chapter meetings on zoom on other applications on skype whatever is need whatever you can continue your household meetings that's critical that's the foundation of our community so you know if it means just calling five people over the phone the husbands the wives teleconference go ahead and do it it's very very important and uh, formators district servants chapter servants continue your formation for the community for the members conduct clss where possible online have worship have intercession come together and intercede let's plead for god's mercy upon this wicked generation that we are all part of that god will have mercy and he will heal our land so brothers and sisters i really urge you to come together during this time when we can't meet physically to still make it possible to continue our community life this is god's calling for us to not stop meeting to keep the fire burning that after this lockdown we will come out much more stronger as a community we come out spiritually much more on fire for god that we will be ready to go out and evangelize because god is preparing a mighty harvest and he is preparing us to be ready to go into the harvest once the lockdown opens up people will be waiting as brother joe said whenever he speaks he is constantly focusing on that one scripture verse that pagans will come and tell where is your god we want you to tell us where is your god and we should be ready to show people that jesus is lord so brothers and sisters take this time as an opportunity to prepare ourselves spiritually come together intercede let the community meetings happen online let the formation programs happen online let cls is continue let's not hold back let's not wait for the lockdown to end because souls are at stake so i leave with you brothers and sisters two questions to reflect on what has been the most challenging part of dealing with the pandemic or the lockdown and why and the second is how can you proclaim jesus christ as our king in this time of quarantine or lockdown so what are the concrete steps that we can take to continue to proclaim to continue to be channels to save souls let's pray brothers and sisters father in heaven wanna thank you god for speaking to us for challenging us for allowing us to go through this time of purification go through this time 
where you are calling us to come to you and abide with you. That without you, we can do nothing, Lord. Father, we pray for grace that we will grow in our relationship with you with our intensity. God, we will read your word. We will take care of the poor. We will continue to meet together as a community. Father, we will prepare ourselves for a mighty harvest. Mama Mary, we entrust ourselves to you, Mama. Our near and dear ones, our family members, all the healthcare workers, all the people who are struggling with the COVID-19, with the sickness. Mama, we ask you to lead them to your son, Jesus. We want to pray for healing upon their lives. We want to pray for protection for all the doctors and nurses as well. We pray that the poor will not go hungry. That you will use us as instruments to share your generosity with the needy. Mama, lead us to your son, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want to really thank you for taking this time to listen to what God is really speaking to us. I pray that you will respond to God generously and that as a community, we will grow much stronger during this time and they'll be ready for what God has in store after the lockdown opens. God bless you. May God be with you. Thank you.